Hello guys, today I'd like to walk you through my beauty retouching techniques. Most of them are really simple and repetitive, but they are one of my favorite ways to work on beauty images. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let's get right into it. First, I always create a duplicate layer to make sure whatever I do can be undone. Afterwards, I just grab a healing brush and I start healing the skin. Make sure to always select the closest piece of good skin to where you're about to clone. This way your skin color will match and stay consistent. I always use healing brush as the first stage of clearing the skin. I get rid of small imperfections like pimples, bumps or small discolorations. Now that I have the skin cleared, I'm going to move to clearing the little stray hairs that are on her face. Um, what I usually do, I just grab a healing brush, I select the clean skin and then I just drag along the hair. It's just the quickest way to do it instead of just clicking continuously. So obviously if there is a different situation that might not work, but in this case it did, um, it just makes the process much much quicker. So yeah, I just grab the brush, I drag it across the hair. And this way I remove quite a big chunk. I make sure not to delete too much at one time because, you know, it might go wrong. So I go section by section and I um, just erase the hair. If you watched my last video that I did on retouching, um, I used a patch tool um, instead of a healing brush. It doesn't really matter what you use, whatever you feel the most comfortable with. Um, this time I just wanted to try something different because usually I do go ahead and use a patch tool. I will use it a bit later on in this tutorial, but, um, but yeah. Now that the cloning is done, I move on to dodge and burn. If you want to see how it's done step by step, please watch my previous tutorial, I'll link it below. Um, I explain in depth how it's done, what you do step by step and so on. Once I'm set up with dodge and burn, um, I start clearing the skin, I look at parts that are darker and I just go over them uh, with white brush on a very low fill opacity, so around 1 or 2%. It's always very important to check on your work, sometimes when you're doing it it seems right but then when you look back at it you see how far you've went or you know that you went a bit overboard which is fine. Um, as you see it happened to me with the chest, it was way too bright and it just felt out of place. So I just grabbed an eraser tool and I just erased the parts that I wasn't happy with on the 50% grey layer. You could do that or you could also create a mask on top of the 50% grey and just mask it out. Um, I just went for the razor, um, but either way is fine. It will work. It will work just the same. When I work on dodge and burn, I always make sure that I like the consistency of the skin first, that I like the color, I like how even it is, and then I move on to highlights and shadows. I never go for highlights and shadows first. Um, I just find it out of place. Once I have the basic dodging and burning done, um, I always crop the image to make sure that I don't really spend time on the unnecessary parts of the image that are going to be cropped afterwards. Um, you know, if you can save time, why not? 
Next on, I created an empty layer and put it on the color blending mode and now I'm going to go over the skin. Um, it's a great way to match the skin if there's any discolorations or any difference in color without affecting the texture. Um, so I'll just go over it, I'll go over the chest area because it seems a bit paler than her skin, um, so that will match it perfectly. As you see, the skin has a lovely even tone now, um, the face is matching the rest of the body, which is great. Once I have that done, I move into Dodge and Burn. I will also sample um, with an eyedropper and I'm going to add a bit more colour to the eyelids. First I'm going to go for a slightly turquoise kind of colour and then I'm going to go over it with a slightly blue tone. I think it's going to make it look a bit more rich and a bit more defined. Now I'm moving on to liquify. Um, I'm just going to define the shape of the eye makeup. Um, it's a tiny, tiny bit, um, not, not as straight as I would like it to be. So I'm just going to fix that. I am also going to define the shape of the lips ever so slightly. Um, it doesn't really need much. Um, it's not a strong lipstick color, it's a lip gloss. So I'm, I'm not going to really change it drastically. Now that the eye shape is perfect and I have the color that I like, I am going to go to Dodge and Burn, grab a dark colored brush and I'm going to fill in the eye to make it look a bit more intense and stand out a bit more. So I'm going to go over the shadows um, and then I'm going to use the bright one to go over the highlights. This way it makes the eye look very dramatic, uh, much more defined and it's going to make the color pop way more. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm moving to my favorite patch tool. Um, I just have little areas of the skin that I'm not perfectly happy with. Um, maybe there is a bit too much texture or you can see pores. Either way, um, I am going to clear them up a bit and then go from there. Once I have the skin done, I am going to go and work on my eyebrows. Um, I think they need a tiny bit of definition, so a bit of a darker um, color. And then I'm going to clean up the edges around them as well, so there is no um, stray hairs or like, you know, little eyebrow hairs that I'm not happy with. First, I'm going to use the stamp tool just to um, clear up the top of the eyebrow because there is a tiny bit of um, stray hairs there. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the patch tool and get rid of the front of the eyebrows and then just go over it with a um, stamp tool again. Again, whatever works the best for you, um, I just used the patch tool and the stamp tool because the stamp tool itself wasn't really doing it for me. There was too much of a color difference, so that's why I went for that combination. to go and do the highlights um, I am going to go over the chest area first and then I'm going to select the little highlights on the lips on the nose on the eyes just to make sure everything is nice and glowy Next on, because I feel like the face is a tiny bit too dark, I am going to create a curve layer um, with a bit more brightness to it. Um, I'm going to mask it and then just fill in the face um, in places where I feel it's too dark with a um, very soft brush. I will go also into the color layer again and make sure that the face is perfectly matched um, when it comes to color, so I'm going to go over it again. 
What I also like to do when it comes to skin retouching is grabbing a brush and sampling the skin color and then just going over the skin with the color um, on a very low fill, around 2%. It's a great way to go about smoothing but not blurring the skin. Now I'm going to create a curve layer. The highlights are going to be the top part of the curve and the shadows are going to be the bottom part. I find this way of creating a curve a bit better than creating a contrast one because contrast usually affects color and makes it look a bit more intense. Um, this just affects the highlights and the shadows without affecting the color as such. Okay, now I'm going to work on highlights some more. I'm going to go over the highlights and the hair um, and the skin. Again, it's really important to check, check your work. As you see, I went a bit overboard on the hair highlights, so I'm creating a mask and getting rid of the parts that I think are way too intense. Next on, I am going to create hue saturation curve and just bring the saturation in the eyes and then the lips a tiny bit more. To do that, I just invert the mask into black and then fill in the areas of the image that I want more colorful with a white brush. This time, because I'm only filling in the color, the fill can be much higher, um, probably around 17%. Um, Next on, I'm creating another curves layer. Um, I'm putting it up to be a bit brighter and I'm going to fill in the chest area because I feel it has a bit too many shadows in there. I'm creating a very slight contrast curve. Um, as I mentioned, contrast usually affects color, so I don't want to be too extreme because I think it brings the image uh, quality down. Next, I'm going to create a hue saturation layer, um, just as I said, because contrast is making the colors a bit stronger. And I'm going to desaturate it by about eight and then invert the layer and fill in um, the areas that I need a bit less colorful. Here again you see the final stages of me fixing the skin and I'm working a bit more on the chest area just to make sure everything matches perfectly. Um, if I see anything that puts me off I will try and fix it. So I'll either brighten it or you know if I see any imperfections I'm going to use the clone tool or um, the patch tool to get rid of it. But this is just very very minute little fixes um, that just annoy me personally but obviously um, it's up to you if you work on something like that or not, you can just leave it be and that's it. Finally, I am going to have a look at the color correction. Uh, in fairness, I am quite happy with how the colors in the image look. Um, I am going to add a tiny bit more green in my shadows. Um, I'm not really going to do anything to the blacks because as I said, I am pretty happy with the way it looks. Um, obviously you can play a bit more with the color, um, it's entirely up to you. I usually do, but in this case I think the, the colors are quite natural and this is what I like. Okay, and finally I am going to sharpen. I always sharpen the images at the end, I don't know why, but it's just the way I like to do it. I always go for smart sharpen. Um, I always sharpen my images quite a bit because I think they need it. Um, it's not over sharpened in any way. Um, I just think it gives it the nice crispness that I want in an image. One more little fix. I'm going to make the eyebrows just a tiny bit darker. Um, I think they need a tiny bit more definition to match the hair so they don't look too grey. 
okay guys that's it um that's what we did as you see it might seem a bit long but in fairness a lot of it is very repetitive it's doing the same thing over and over and over until you're happy with the final result um i hope you like this video i hope you learned something from it and if you did i would love if you give it a thumbs up um, I'd love to see if you subscribe to my channel and definitely let me know what you want to see in the coming weeks. I can do Dug and Burn, I can do anything else that you might be interested in. So yeah, please let me know and um, I'll see you next time.